So you're doing some PVC work and you come to realize you screwed up. What do you do now? Do you go out and get a new fitting or do you try to take this puppy out of here? Well, stick around. I'm going to show you some of my techniques and hopefully get you out of jam. Hey, welcome folks, Bob here from BobsPlumbingVideos.com. On this channel, I provide free plumbing tutorials for people who don't want to call a plumber. No scientific data, no fancy chemical breakdown of the materials I use in these videos, just common sense solutions to everyday plumbing problems. After all, folks, you shouldn't have to take out a mortgage to be able to afford a plumber. If you're new to the channel, I highly recommend you subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit that bell notification so you'll be notified of when I post a new video. Now, let's get into this video. Oops, I almost forgot. Get lost. All right, we're on the bench, and I laid out some tools, you know, possible tools you may want to use if you're going to attempt to remove a piece of PVC. But let's start by saying that, you know, if you're working out in the open, you're doing a little alteration, and, you know, you got all your fittings laid out, you know, for the cost of a... This is an inch and a half PVC elbow or a two inch PVC elbow. I don't know, are you gonna to wanna to go through the trouble of, of trying to get this out if you screwed something up? Maybe, maybe not. On the other hand, if this pipe is inside of a wall and you realized, you know, maybe you were doing some finish work and you were working at the drain and this is inside of a wall embedded in a wall, obviously if you screwed up, you're not gonna you're not going to be able to change that fitting without opening up the wall and making a major job out of it. So you may want to, you know, consider taking the stub out of there. Now, one of the most popular ways I've seen of removing the piece of PVC uh, is using heat. And there are uh, plenty of YouTube videos uh, showing you a method whereby they use a hole saw. Uh, now, depending upon the size pipe you're working with, uh, you would have to get an appropriate sized hole saw. And this is inch and a half we're looking at here. So in this case, let me bring my tape measure up here. And you would want to get something that actually, uh, actually fits inside there pretty snugly. So we're looking at maybe, maybe inside of this piece of pipe here. Let me get this over here maybe inch and three eighths, I would say, an inch and three eight uh, hole saw. And uh, for two inch pipe, let's bring up the two inch pipe here. We would be looking at maybe an inch, an inch and seven eighths hole saw. And basically in these videos, from what I've seen is, they have a propane torch, a pair of pliers, and they'll heat up the hole saw until this is cherry red. I mean, literally cherry red. And what they will do is they will insert this inside of the stub out. Now, let me just back up a minute. When you do this, what I would recommend you do is cutting this flush, cutting this flush with the fitting then you can drop the hole saw in. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna get some nasty, nasty fumes that are gonna smoke up. And I highly recommend you do this outside or you do this in a garage, an open garage. Do not do it inside. Wear a respirator, do not wear a, a dust mask because it gets nasty. And you would leave this in there, you know, three minutes, five minutes, and you're gonna come by and you're gonna be pushing on the plastic, pushing on it, pushing on it, pushing on it to see that it gets malleable and pliable. And then you'll remove the blade and you can simply go in there with a screwdriver and actually it becomes so malleable that you'll be able to grab it with a needle nose pliers and just, you'll be able to twist this piece of pipe right out of there. Cause the piece of pipe is literally becomes like a rubber band. But again, nasty, nasty fumes, um, I mean, if this piece of pipe is inside of a wall, I don't think I would want a chance uh, doing that. Uh, you don't know what's in the wall. You may have insulation. You may have flammable uh, 
material behind there, uh, I don't know that I would want to do that. Now, alternatively, I've also seen people use, rather than use the hole saw, they would use the, uh, this is a piece of inch and a half tubular, such as you would see under a, you know, kitchen sink to pipe in the drain to the P-trap. And this rather fits in here pretty, pretty snugly. So, and what I would do is I'd probably cut this off. You know, I wouldn't leave it, I wouldn't heat a piece this long. I probably, I think I have a mark on this. Yeah, I have a mark. I'd probably leave maybe an inch sticking out. And this is going to heat up much faster than the hole saw blade, although the hole saw blade steel, this is tubular. But I've seen videos where they heat this up where it gets cherry red. And you just put this in there with the needle nose pliers and you just let it sit in there. And what happens is, is that the pipe actually heats up and becomes malleable, almost becomes rubber-like. And you're able to uh, pry it out. I don't use this method. I wouldn't use this method. I, I just, you know, the fumes and, and, and all the rest of that good stuff that go along with using a torch and PVC just don't sit well with me. Besides, again, if I'm working in the open, chances are I'm going to just get another elbow, another fitting, and, you know, I'm not going to go through this trouble. Uh, now, if you, if you glued this piece up, and maybe you went to lunch, you came back, maybe an hour has gone by, you probably could put a pipe wrench on this and actually get it to release because the, the glue and primer really, I would say, needs a good 24 hours to properly set. So if, if you're an hour into it and you decided, wow, I screwed up, I got to remove this, you know, you could put a pipe wrench on this and actually twist the pipe, it'll come out. Then you'd have to go in there and sand out the remnants of the old uh, primer and glue and then it'll be reusable again. But in a case where this is inside of a wall and you're not out in the open, what I do, and I don't know if you can see here, I make cuts. I make, the amount of cuts I make is gonna depend on the size of the pipe. Now I'm working mainly, I do service and repair, so inch and a half pipe, two inch pipe. So, to start, four cuts. I'm going to make a cut with a hacksaw blade. And I will use a hacksaw blade without a handle or with a handle. Doesn't make a difference. And the idea is to put a cut in the pipe, which you don't want to cut into the fitting. And how I do it is I use a hacksaw blade that's got approximately 24 teeth per inch. Now you can get an 18 tooth per inch or a 32 tooth per inch blade, I find that the 24 teeth to an inch blade works best. And what I actually do is, I don't know if you can see this, but I cut the, I cut the rounded edge off of the, the, uh, the blade. There's a rounded edge on the blade here. And I actually cut it off because I don't know if you can see this, but the teeth don't quite go all the way to the very end of this blade. And, and I like to get the teeth all the way there. So if I cut it off, now I cut this off with a sheet metal shears. I just make a little cut and I very carefully go in there and I start and you know, it's, you gotta start easy, easy, easy. You gotta go in there, you gotta cut. You gotta cut, you gotta make your cut. And once you feel you're down close to the fitting, you can stop. You gotta turn. And as you can see on this inch and a half piece of pipe, I have I made four cuts. So that leaves me four quadrants that I am going to I'm actually gonna pry these out and we're gonna go over to the device. I'm gonna pry these out with a screwdriver. I I, I made these cuts uh, before we started filming this this way uh, in an effort to save time. But the technique is, you know, simply you go in there easy, easy, nice, nice, and you go in and you make your slice. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to cut into the, uh, the fitting itself. So, you know, you, you don't want to be sending this all the way in. You just, on the edge, short, 
short, steady burst, short, steady burst, and you will get this down close to the fitting. You want to get it down as close as you can without hitting the fitting. And uh, always, always, if you have a piece of pipe that's sticking out like this and you weren't able to get it out with a wrench because it's been more than an hour, let's say you came back 24 hours later and you decided, damn it, this is wrong, I, I, I gotta redo this. I would cut this off flush. Even, even if this is inside the wall, I would get as close to the wall as I could. In this case, as you can see, you know, if this was inside the wall and that's, that's as far as I could get to the fitting because the fitting would set back, you know, you just, you're just gonna have to tough it out. You tough it out, you go in there and you make your cuts. You make your cuts and you get down as far as you can. You make your cuts. Now you can use either the hacksaw blade alone or you can go out and get one of these little tools here whereby you can put a hacksaw blade in there and you know you can use the handle and that'll maybe give you a little better leverage but again you're going to go in here and you're going to make your cuts so in this case it's inch and a half pipe i made four cuts you could also in an effort to uh shave this off again if it's inside of a wall it's under a cabinet and you can't Get a hacksaw on it to, to, to cut it flush. If you're in, uh, in possession of a oscillating tool, a multi-tool, you can come in here with this blade and just make your cut and, and go right across and cut that piece off flush. Now, when I do put this in the vise, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pry two of these pieces out with a screwdriver. And we'll pry two pieces out without heating it. And I'll show you, if you use a heat gun, if you have one available, I'll show you by heating it how it may make it a little easier for you to come in there. Now, in lieu of a heat gun, if you don't have a heat gun, you could certainly use a hairdryer, a good hairdryer. You set it on high. Again, you know, I would use caution if you're inside of a wall and there's insulation in there. We don't want to set anything on fire, but let's go over to the vise. I will put this in the vise. And again, I made these cuts prior to recording the video. So those cuts are already in there. And what we're going to do is, is, is I'll show you how I pry those pieces. Now, now this, this was glued in yesterday. So there's 24 hours have gone by and there was no way this piece was coming out. So let's jump over to the vise and I'll show you how to uh, get these pieces out of here. All right, so I'm in the vise and what I'm going to do is I'm going to step away from the microphone a second and I'm going to pry two of these pieces out without using a heat gun. All right, so we got two pieces out dry, and if you wish, I personally don't think it's necessary, but what do I know? Uh, I'm going to get the heat gun here and heat the remaining two pieces in here and see if we can get that to come off with a little less effort, if you desire.
So, so there it is. Uh, you know, I guess you have a choice if you want to use the heat gun and it makes life easier for you, uh, by all means. Let me just get this elbow loose here from the vise. And basically, what I would do is I would come in here with some sandpaper. And you could sand this. You can clean this up. You can clean this up. And sand it, reprime it, and honestly, guys, this is going to be fine. You reprime it, you put glue in there, and you're going to be good to go. Um, if you like, I, like I said, if this is inside the wall, this is probably something you might want to consider doing. I don't know that I would go through all this trouble, um, you know, if I'm working out in the open and I got a bunch of fittings around and I screwed up, and I probably would just grab another elbow, but. It is possible to take these out. Again, if it's been less than 24 hours, you went to lunch and let's say you got the stub in there for an hour, I'd probably come back with a pipe wrench and just twist this and, and this will come out because the glue hasn't really set up. But if it's in a situation where it's inside of a wall, certainly if it's inside of a wall, you're not going to be wanting to heat up a hole saw or a piece of tubing and sticking it in there. At least I wouldn't. Um, I don't want a chance, God forbid, setting it, anything on fire. Now these little, these little, you know, striations or cuts in here, that's, that's not a problem because once you glue the new piece of pipe in here, you're going to be good to go. Um, trust me, I've done it. It's worked like a charm. Once I glue my new piece of pipe inside of here, it's good to go. And that's it, guys. So if you're in a situation where you uh, made a screw up, and you want to know if you can get that piece of PVC pipe out of there? Yes, you can. Um, again, you're going to have to make your cuts on two inch, inch and a half pipe. I probably would make four cuts if we're getting into three inch pipe. I probably would get into the six cut range. And on four inch pipe, I probably would make eight cuts. Nice and easy with a 24 teeth per inch hacksaw blade. You make those cuts in there. You try not to get close to the fitting. As you can see here, I, you know, I didn't nick it, but listen, you're going to be gluing a piece of pipe in here. This is going to be fine. You re, you reprime it, you re-glue it, you're good to go. So there you go, guys. I hope, uh, I hope you got some tips. I hope you learned something and, uh, let me know in the comments. I mean, if you think the, uh, hole saw method or the tubular method with the heat is, is your preferred method, let me know. Um, I've never done it. I've seen it on YouTube. It seems to work, but anytime I've made a screw up, I've simply made my cuts and just banged the piece out with a screwdriver. And frankly, I haven't used the heat gun myself, but if you feel it's easier and you want to get that plastic soft so you can basically just twist it out of there, you're good to go. 
So there you go, guys. So there you go, guys. Now you know a few techniques on how to get this stub out of this fitting. Now, if you're working out in the open with fittings, you're doing an alteration, it may just pay to get another fitting. But if this is inside of the wall, you may want to consider one of those techniques I just showed you. Folks, I'm glad you stopped by. I look forward to seeing everyone again in my next video. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing and hit that bell notification so you'll know when I post a new video. And also check out these two videos that are going to pop up here to my right. One of them I chose, one of them YouTube recommended. Stay well, and as always, folks, happy plumbing.